Boys and girls, wherever you may happen to be, and please do tell me where you are, and welcome to episode... I've actually forgotten, 63. Episode 63 of Love at First Scent, with me, Persele, is coming to you today from YouTube. And before I go any further, let me just make sure that everything is okay on the tablet, which it seems to be. Even I have to skip an ad when I want to see if everything is working. Right, okay, brilliant. It seems to be fine. Uh, so thank you very much for tuning in. I just very quickly wanted to say what the, uh, the the rough plan is for today. It's been a little while since I've done one of these videos and that was unexpected. I thought I may have been able to do one in, um, last weekend, but you know, uh, life gets in the way. I think as I said on my blog, the, the, the fates and life, etc., get in the way unexpectedly, which is, which is, which is their, their, their job in this world, I think. But the plan for today is that we are going to start with this. We're gonna start with a diptyque then I will finish the video and, fingers crossed, all being well, I hope to do three more videos in quick succession, um, including one on a brand new scent from Hermès. So if you can stick around for that, uh, please do. As, as is usual for these uh, single perfume videos, each one will probably about be about 15 minutes long, depending on, well, depending on how much you interact, actually, and, and how interesting the press releases are. Uh, yes, uh, Umberto Hermes, uh, a new, I will tell you now that it's a flanker, but let's not talk about that one too much because then we'll just confuse things. So, part of the reason why I'm trying to do quite a few today, uh, number one is because I can, uh, and so I thought I would uh, try and share with you as many new releases as possible, but also because I know that for the next two weeks, again, because of stuff happening, I'm not going to be able to do too many. So I thought, well, while I'm able to, let me get a few out of the way. There is a slight possibility, I don't want to make too many promises, there is a slight possibility that I may be able to do another one or two perhaps tomorrow, Saturday, or, or maybe on Sunday, um, but, but you know, I, I don't want to kind of get carried away and be uh, over-ambitious. The, the trouble is that there are quite a few New Year spring releases to share with you, so I would very much like to be able to bring them to your attention, but sometimes that isn't possible. Uh, and 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 if it isn't, then I will try to write about them on my blog, etc., etc. So that's a very very lengthy preamble. Thank you very much for tuning in. Usual rules apply. There will be a, a blotter update uh, in the video description a few hours after the end uh, of the broadcast of the video. Please, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video, or indeed a thumbs down if you don't like the video, but it would also be interesting to find out in the comments uh, why you don't like the video. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question, whether you're watching uh, live right now or whether you're watching the recording, or whether you're watching through Facebook. I try to link as many of the videos as possible to Facebook. And do also please consider supporting my work on the coffee page, kofi.com. You will find a link to that in the description below a little while after the end of the initial broadcast. So with all of that out of the way, a very, very sunny uh, good afternoon to you. A lot of what you see here is natural light. Goodness me, February, and we've got some light. Hello to Umberto and hello to Sonic Sonic 69 Sonic. Um, Apologies as well to a few people from a certain segment of the United States who were shocked by the fact that I would be doing this video at this time. And Oh, Peggy says hello. Thank you very much, Peggy, for tuning in. Did you notice I used the Peggy board? I'm still trying to use the Peggy board. Apologies to people, I guess, on the, you know, on the, closer towards the west coast of the, of the US um, who said that this would, it was a little bit too early for them to tune in, but that's fair enough. Lynn Smell says, hello, bonjour. Uh, Smaranda says, finally catch you live, fantastic. Hello from South Korea, wow. Hello, my liege, says Ashok. Listen, you need to stop this my liege thing, you know. Actually, no, carry on. Send, send, send tribute, send tribute my way. Okay, so, hello, Persele, says Reza, hi. I've just noticed, as I do this, where is that light coming from? Oh, okay, I think I know. Let's try and sort this out. Is that gonna fix it? See, this is, this is live, people. I don't have a lighting person. Bonsoir, says Angeline. Bonsoir to you as well. So, uh, we will start with this. This is brand new from Diptyque, as you can see. It's called uh, Au Capital. <clears throat> But one thing I would like to know is why so many of you seemed particularly keen for me to review this. I cannot remember the last time I have had so many emails and social media comments, you know, comments on Instagram, indeed comments on the last one or two videos I've done here on YouTube saying, when are you going to review the new 
diptyque. I do get I, I, I do get a fair number of people getting in touch now and then saying, you know, when are you going to do this one? When are you, when are you going to do that one? But the interest in this um, has act taken me by surprise. Not because not because I don't think that a new release from Diptyque isn't interesting. Um, I'm most interested in the Celine fragrances, says Angelina. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to be able to get hold of those. The, the, there doesn't seem to be any way at the moment. There you go. We've got an answer, Miranda, because many people think it's a more affordable version of Portrait of a Lady. Ah, I have no idea. See, you've let the cat out of the bag now. Seriously. I love Vetiverio EDP, says Reza. Yes, definitely a, 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 um, a, a good set, a, one, of, one of the better scents from that band. Gosh, so of course now, because um, I, I genuinely had no idea that that was, that was the big deal about this. I almost wish you hadn't told me that now, because now I'm, now I'm, I'm going to be heading in that direction, aren't I? I see. Okay, well, we should... Uh, Ashfaq says... Oh, I, I can't make out that emoji. What is that symbol over there? Hang on. Let's see, I need to get the tablet. What are you saying there? Something a hundred. I'm guessing that's a currency symbol. Uh... A, P a Porter of a Lady clone, says Umberto, oh no. Well, I, I guess we need to smell it now. I guess, I, I genuinely, genuinely didn't know. I personally don't find them that much alike, but many people seem to perceive it that way. Um, oh, Euro, is that, I guess that means Euro, says Ash uh, Ashfaq. I couldn't see that, um, couldn't see that. Okay, so let's just quickly label my blotter because we're probably going to be getting through a few blotters in today's episodes smell it smell it yes i am going to look by the way i've also learned how to open these deep teeth packages if any of you remember the last time i did a deep teeth where i basically ripped this bit open so here we go oh capital uh deep teeth, um don't need to be told very much about um packaging they they certainly have got the packaging thing down right what does that say there Okay, it's just the names of their different perfumes. So let's try. Let's try another little um, thumbnail image. Uh, the last one's PR was too much, says Ashfaq. That was the, that was the Greek myths one, wasn't it? So there you go. Oh, capital, po pose, pose, serious pose, Persilaise, serious smiley, authoritative but approachable, and so in awe of this beautiful bottle before us. This is going to make the worst thumbnail ever, isn't it? Let me just shut up for a second. And... <laughs> you have a matching shirt with the scent. Do I? Um, well, let's find out. Perhaps you could cultivate a friendship with Mrs. Sliman. <laughs> Love the colour of the juice. Um, I'm, I'm just so intrigued now. Let's find out. But but because you see that that idea has been put into my head, and of course, portrait is a, is a scent that I know very very well. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Can you guys see it there? Actually, yeah, just about. Okay, right. Oh dear. Well, yes, I think. Um, oh, this is when we need Madame Persilaise, because some of you will know. Actually, a lot of you may have not realised this until you'd read this book, Perfume in Search of Your Signature Scent by Neil Chapman, where he really let the cat out of the bag. And in his review of Portrait of a Lady, he actually, you know, he 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 talked about coming here to 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 our house and and. Um, experiencing the full glory that is Madame Persilaise wearing Portrait of a Lady. Where is she go get her, says Cuba. Actually, I can't because at the moment we're on extra grandparent duty and we have an unexpected day of looking after one of our grandkids. So she is busy. So if you hear any baby squeals coming, that you will know where they're coming from. Um, wish I hadn't told you, says Miranda. No, no, that's what this is about. It, it's, but... Okay. But for, for, the, for the two of you out there who have never smelt Portrait of a Lady, the reason why this does remind me of Portrait of a Lady is because, uh, let's see the baby. No, we, no, I shouldn't have said that now. That's why I saw those shoes on Instagram. Yes, <laughs> yes, well connected, very good. Um, this is gonna make no sense to people watching the, the recorded version. We need, to, we need to focus on the perfume, I think. Okay, so the reason why it does remind me of Portrait of a Lady is because of that peppery berry note at the top, but very, very dry berries, okay? There isn't anything sickly fruity happening here. Going into a patchouli rose. But to, to, to give it its due, so far, at least on the blotter, this is, this is drier. It, it's actually making me realize 
that Portrait of a Lady perhaps is a little bit sweeter than, than I had appreciated until now. This seems to have a drier, dare I say, you know, in inverted commas, a more masculine lean, but on, only, only marginally. And also one of the things that I really, really love about Portrait of a Lady is the way that in that perfume Dominique Orpion has handled the incense note. People keep talking about it as a patchouli rose, but for me it's very much um, an incense patchouli rose. Whereas here, I suppose what I'm getting stronger is, is the woody note and and actually a kind of chypre inflect I mean, you, you could you could categorize Portrait of a Lady as a chypre as well. Some people put it in the Oriental category. But here the kind of already what's coming through is is the sort of that, that kind of inky mossiness that you might associate with, with the sort of moss background of of chypre scents, which you don't get particularly in Portrait of a Lady. Portrait um goes more in that patchouli direction. Smeranda says definitely reminiscent of Portrait but not complete twins. Certainly on the basis of you know just having smelt it only for two minutes and just the opening stages I would agree. Um, same, same family definitely draws from that but, but it, it, it isn't it isn't a clone um, and, and, and no doubt when I do the, the the written description at the end of the video you know in the in, in the video description below um, I will definitely have to let you know what Madame Persolet thinks. And Smeranda agrees that Portrait is more incense, whereas this is more patchouli. But I am now intrigued, actually, to find out what, what, what the idea for this was from Diptyque. So let us go to the press release. It is a lengthy press release, uh, as Diptyque ones tend to be, but I, I, I'm not proposing on um, reading all of it to you. Gorgeous graphics, you know, P P Diptyque know what they're doing when, when it comes to... In fact, let's just flood your screens with, with these beautiful rose graphics. Um, so I'll, I'll, if, 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 we, if we lose interest, then we'll just sort of veer off. Paris is yours, it says. Although born in the fifth arrondissement, its toe almost in the waters of the Seine, and although still a resident, not once in almost 60 years since Diptyque was founded, has it shared the story of its life in Paris. A simple omission, like looking for your glasses when all the time they were resting on your forehead. A Freudian slip that makes you wonder of which repressed emotion it might be a symptom. Or after all, and as everyone knows, since it is the guardian divinity of the house, might it be a chance inconsistency? Rather than founder in speculation, there was an urgent need to right this wrong. Okay, so I guess Capital refers to the capital of France. To remind those, perhaps a larger number, who, imagining it anchored in London or New York, may not know that Diptyque is primarily a child of the Parisian left bank. To make amends for such a long silence and after the Venice of Olen, the Greece of Philosikos, the Vietnam of Dosson, and the Japan of Oedo, it is simultaneously paying dual homage to its native city. And, uh, as this press release reminds me, there is also a candle to go with this, which I haven't smelled. The candle is called Paris en Fleur, and this is the Eau Capitale. And then there are some statistics about the Belle Epoque. Uh, don't want to bog us down with that. Apparently there was 37 bridges in Paris, 49 foot bridges, uh, 12,000 cafes untouched by the years. I always knew there was a reason why I liked Paris. 19 milliners. That's interesting. Not to mention 700 hives for bees. Anyway, so it goes on. Uh, how should we celebrate such a city? Embracing it all would be utopian. Shedding light on a single aspect impossible. Why the cheeky Paris of, oh, I don't know these areas, Mastinguet or, Mastinguet or Gavroche, and not the revolutionary Paris of Camille Desmoulins and Louise Michel? Why prefer the Butte aux Cailles between... <laughs> But my French is being even the name of the Hermes that's coming up is going to be tongue twister for me. Uh, and so it goes on. Obviously, as always, and as ever at Diptyque, where we believe so strongly in serendipity, it was an unforeseen event, an unexpected incident that brought the solution to light. It happened on Avenue de l'Opera, or to be more precise, at home. Not long ago, the house moved into a beautiful apartment of the noble floor of a Osman-style building located on this major road. What seduced us? The incredible ceiling heights, large windows, bordering balconies, marble fireplaces, etc, etc. On pushing open a hidden door, we discovered the bathroom of a former occupant, Sarah Bernhardt. Uh, we believe so, since the address was then one of the chicest in the capital. 
do you mind if I just kind of keep going? Then there's something called birth, a section called birth of sheep. Um, then there's something about the sheep, but I would really, okay, let's go. Au, au capital. Au capital is the first diptyque sheep. I'd have to look at their catalogue closely to see if I agree with that. As such, it follows a principle conceived more than a century ago. Olivier Pecheur, a high-flying perfumer and faithful companion, nevertheless took care to illuminate it with the lights of the 21st century. An abstract, enigmatic fragrance, it embodies a form of slightly detached refinement of the elegance exuded by the aura of the City of Light. What? An abstract, enigmatic fragrance embodying a form of slightly detached refinement. Okay. It opens with the freshness of verre de bergamote, tempering its consummate voluptuousness. Fruity, yes, yet lively and zesty. Was it studded with pink peppercorns to recall the pomanders, oranges pricked with cloves once brought back from England by Desmond, or maybe just to remind us of Portrait of a Lady, who knows? Or to orchestrate the eagerly awaited olfactory accident between the flower and the spice is like an exclamation mark, a capital letter. Fine. This is, this is carrying on a bit. Oh, I've just seen a word that I don't, don't particularly, not especially crazy about. In the centre of the triangle is a bouquet of flowers bordering on excess, wide open petals on the verge of falling, intense, rich scents of roses from Bulgaria and Turkey, and ylang ylang from the Comoros. No doubt François Coty used the grass variety of centifolia, also known as May Rose, now almost impossible to find. Botanists have managed to replace it with extremely fine cultivars planted in Eastern Europe, etc. Uh, it stands for freedom, no lichen, no moss or oak or pine, but yes, patchouli, with its leaf distilled to the heart in Indonesia in line with the ethical qualities of sustainable development and the peppery facet of Akigala wood. Now we've, we've talked about Akigala wood here, uh, um, a givaudan material, produced by an enzymatic reaction of the plant in contact with ad hoc bacteria and finally Georgi wood for its earthy and dark vetiver-like aspects. Ambrofix between musk, dry tobacco, and ambergris closes the chapter. Phew. Um, and then I think it just sort of goes on a little bit about the product and then about the candle. So uh, it the 75 mil, is this 75 mils? Yes, retails at 120 pounds. So uh, Still not exactly cheap, although it's cheaper than, than Portrait of a Lady. Okay, I missed loads and loads of comments, I think. Cuban Groove says, Diptyque does patchouli well. I love what they did with Tempo, which was also an Akigala wood fragrance, um, also uh, Givaudan. Uh, Nick says, hello, hi. Cuban Groove, I guess they didn't give you the abridged version, no. Sarah Bernhardt is a very interesting person, says Umberto. Very bergamot. Sorry, Ver Bergamot. Uh, Jacqueline's perfumery, you said that it's running a bit masculine, so is it a bit too masculine, like a cologne, that a woman couldn't pull it off? If something smells too cologne, I can't wear it. Those are personal things. You've got to just try, you know, to, to me, if, if I say something is leaning towards masculine, that never, ever means that a woman can't wear it and, and vice versa. And Stephanie says, hello, made it. Thank you very much. I'm actually wearing Portrait of a Lady today. Talk about serendipity, <laughs> says Miranda. Peggy says, the difference with Diptyque's press releases are that they mo they are mostly well written. Yes, absolutely. Lengthy, true, but like a storyboard drawing you in. I would actually want to know more. Fair enough. Bonjour from Paris. How appropriate. And Kali Jan says, what was the press release word that you don't like? Akigala wood. I'm not so crazy about Akigala wood when it's overused. Uh, when I think of fragrances like... Uh, Une Amourette from Etat Libre d'Orange, where I think it is well used, but oh, what was the one that really? Yes, it's it's uh, Experimentum Crucis from Etat Libre d'Orange, where that it really really pushes it, and that's where I kind of think, okay, is is this going a bit too far? But let's re-sniff because we need to move on. Okay, definitely diverging now from Portrait. Um, it, it, it's, it's heading more towards those mossy, woody sheep territories rather than the, the dusky, fiery roses of portrait. And so, seeing as it's meant to convey the idea of, of Paris, uh, 120 mil says, interesting name, it isn't a clone. No, it, de it definitely isn't a clone. Given that it's meant to be Paris, let's actually talk about it for just a few seconds as a representation of Paris. I must admit that even though 
I'm very, very fond of Paris. I haven't been there very much. Paris is a, a city that I don't feel I have ever actually got a handle on. And, and a lot of people, well, you know, it's, it's generally considered to be the city of romance. I, 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 I've never actually kind of tuned into that side of it. Geographically, I haven't got a handle on it in terms of a vibe or a feel, I haven't got a handle on it. Obviously it's it's chic, it's sophisticated, obviously it's architecturally quite consistent, um, but is this is this what I think of when when I imagine Paris in my head? It's I guess it's nocturnal Paris, and I guess it's retro loving Paris, because there is I don't think of Paris as as a modern city. I think of and, and generally actually France, I think, one of France's strengths is that in certain areas it likes to remain rooted in the past, it likes to remain rooted in tradition, it likes to remain rooted in convention. And th and that can be as much a, a strength and an attribute as it sometimes it can be a weakness. So I suppose this is this to me is like a a Paris of an imagined past, you know, perhaps a past that never existed, a past that, you know, for example, somebody like me may say, oh, this makes me think of the 50s, even though I wasn't around in the 50s. Do you know what I mean? When you, when you have a, when you have almost a sort of rose tinted, haha, see what I did there, vision of a time or a place that you haven't even been to, you know, like I may have a, a vision of, I don't know, Singapore, even though I've never been to Singapore. And so this is, I guess, a kind of idealized Paris where um, the, 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 the sun has gone down and then and the lights on the Champs-Elysees have just been turned on and there's a kind of autumn bite already in the air, not quite the crispness of winter, but, but, but people are starting to wear those sort of long coats that at, at, even though you, you, you hate wearing lots and lots of layers in the winter and in the autumn, at least you know that those sort of long lines make you look quite elegant and and <laughs> even though again it doesn't happen and you know the vast majority of people on the Champs-Élysées no longer look so chic but you almost imagine the men wearing hats and 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 the women carrying very very um smart handbags and and yes so i guess i guess it's a sort of idealized past and and very very sophisticated very elegant um so far at least that that Akigala wood which to me can go very very bitter is, is definitely not coming out too much absolutely want to try on skin and I need to I said these videos wouldn't be longer than 15 minutes each so we need to round off but I don't want to be rude and ignore comments Jacqueline says no I didn't mean that I meant if it smells more like more masculine like a man's cologne it's hard for me to wear because it's hard for me to deal with those notes personally yeah absolutely that's fine Angeline says you need to be attached to your quartier to really feel it. It will sort of anchor you to feel the other areas vis-a-vis -vis that specific quarter. Yes, actually, that does strike a chord with me because t t I am always feel drawn to the Latin quarter where I go. So I actually, that's interesting you say that. I hadn't looked at it that way. Smaranda says yes, it's a feeling. Also, it isn't. Isn't it interesting how rose is always retro? Ooh, there's a can of worms. Is all rose always retro? Discuss. Perhaps we should do a whole. We should do a whole rose video actually. Even the more futuristic roses on the market carry that with them. And Ashfaq says, OK, Patel has a solid variant as well. Um, hang on, I'm not with you. What do you mean a solid variant? Umberta, yes, stay in one quartier for a while. Fair enough. I shall, the next time I go, I shall take your tip. OK, so don't forget, blotter update coming soon. This video has gone on way too long. Uh, if you are watching live, please, uh, oh, solid, sorry, a solid perfume variant. OK, thank you very much. Please try and stick around because next we are going to do a brand new Frank flanker from Hermes, but we just need to give uh, YouTube a few minutes to do its thing and finish uploading the video. So I reckon I will see you in about six or seven minutes. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.